I wanted to find a way to explore the most important aspects of building revenues, clients, and relationships for exceptional and luxury brands. And what I'm going to cover today is really going to be uh, very helpful right away. One, one of the things that I'm very focused on is finding a way to make everything that I do effective uh, and usable right away. Uh, rather than tell you uh, the theories of where I see the industry going and what's happening and, and who's doing what, uh, some of that is very useful. But I think what's most important is helping you find a way to put these ideas to use. Uh, so that you can be more more effective. Now, during this series, we're going to discuss the right frame of mind to succeed as a high-end sales professional, how to understand, relate to, and present effectively to buyers, how to become a selling magnet, attracting more um, and more affluent buyers, how to build your client book and recurring business, and how to close more sales and key techniques that will really boost your success. Well, let's talk first about this idea of your client book. Um, I wanted to explain to you what I mean by a client book because it's an idea that you can look at um, figuratively. You can also look at it literally. Uh, some people call it a book of business depending on the industry that they're in. And Wall Street we used to call it you know, your book of business. What does it look like? Uh, in the luxury business, there's, there's literally client books where someone might uh, – um, uh, and look at specifics relative to a particular customer. When I began my career, I worked on Wall Street, and I enjoyed being really well-dressed. And, and I went to this major men's store in New York City, and the salesmen um, and, and ladies, that they really were all men at the time, would ask me the question, can I follow up with you and let you know when something comes in that you might like for your wardrobe? Now, in that brief exchange, that led me to giving them my business card. Uh, I developed a relationship with this salesperson. And, and this fellow was, was quite effective at staying in touch with me. Uh, and one of the things I noticed about him, it was a subtlety, but I picked up on it. He, he felt it was his responsibility to alert me to, to new things that came in, new arrivals, private sales, buying opportunities. And I thought, wow, this guy is really something. And I would come in and I would buy suits and ties and shirts and all sorts of things and spend a lot of money in this store. And it always felt, it almost felt like I was going to a doctor when I would go in to see him. He would say, oh, I saved this for you and thought of you here and I thought of you there. And he, he changed the whole dynamic um, in terms of the, sales conversation and the interaction. So in a literal sense, he had a tangible book. He had a book that had my contact information. He had my sizes, my measurements, my taste, my style, my preferences, my, my color choices, fabric interests, in addition to the items that I had purchased. And he also made note of, of the kinds of things that were important to me, the things that I, you know, sort of my wish list the kinds of things that I bought, and just anything that I had mentioned. I, I remember once I took a friend of mine back to the store, and we were getting fitted for a beautiful wool coats. And while he was fitting my friend, he mentioned something about me. And he said something like, well, Andre went to Florida uh, last year uh, around this time. And I remember turning around and thinking, wow, he really pays attention, doesn't he? He had written it down. I mean, he knew that I had I mentioned that I was going to Florida, and he had it all down. So it, it's interesting to me because he looked at this as a responsibility, and he had lots of detail about me as a client. And, and while I'm using that word client, I, I want to make that distinction between the word customer and client because in the video I sent out, I think it was yesterday or the day before, I used the word client book, um, and then I used the word customer book, and I, and I used them interchangeably. We really shouldn't because sometimes you can use it that way, and sometimes it, 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 we all understand what we mean. But the word client really suggests 
a deeper relationship. It, it's a recurring relationship, and it's and it's almost a fiduciary relationship where essentially you're committed to acting on the best interests in good faith and maintaining the highest level of trust with your client. Now, that's an interesting mindset to get into in terms of building business because a customer is more transactional. So it's, it's like driving on an interstate. Not long ago, I was driving down to see my son in Maryland, and you pop into a rest stop, and you buy a sandwich, and that's a transaction. It happens in and out. Um, the rest stop is not committed to looking out for your dietary interests long term. What they're interested in is just a transaction. But the client relationship is much different. And there's an insight in understanding the differences between the two in terms of attracting more and better clients. Once you decide that someone you've met or someone you want to meet has the potential to be more than a customer, more than a transaction, there is greater potential for a deeper, more thoughtful, more fulfilling, and more profitable relationship. And that is really fundamental to building the process. So uh, think of that right away. Client is someone that I have a responsibility to, to serve, to let know what's going on uh, in my business and in the industry and to keep them abreast of things that are important to them. So before we go uh, further, there are a couple of things I want to say. And, and Corey reminded me of this when we were uh, talking before we got started. There are three things. First is, and I say this in one of the videos that, that I have uh, called um, Luxury Sales Meeting. I am a luxury sales leader. But no matter what industry you're in and what the state of it is, there are always many potential clients out there for you, no matter what state, what season, what the situation. Second, no matter what kind of business you're in and, and what you perceive as weaknesses or disadvantages, there are always great clients out there. So even if you're in a situation where you don't have what seems like a great opportunity, there are great opportunities for you. And third, no matter what your experience has been in terms of difficulty, finding clients, developing the right formula to, to attract them, to keep them, and getting them to buy, there are always great clients out there. And you have to remember that because your attitude and your mindset about this process is really fundamental to your success at attracting clients. I can tell you with, with, without any question that there have been times that I have attracted huge clients, um, four-figure, five-figure, six-figure clients, seven-figure clients, on the basis of having a different attitude about what I did. So the attitude that we're talking about is crucial. There are always big opportunities out there. And as I said in that video, you have to be neutral about what you're reading from the market. You have to focus on what your goal is, what your objective is, and that fiduciary responsibility we talked about. Aim at that, serve that client, stay in contact with that client or that prospect, and what you'll see is that relationship will begin to turn and will become better and better, and you'll start to get the momentum that you really need to turn it into a, a great financial opportunity.